Hello everybody. I'm just waiting for the stream to actually go online here. Just waiting. There's usually about a seven second delay or so. But what we've got here, as you can see, is not just a dragon or any old dragon. There we go. It's confirmed live on YouTube. So I'm going to scroll over here, make sure I've got Mr. Chat all ready to go. Like you do make this a little bit bigger so we've got this is from blackheart models this is the Viserion. i'm just going to pronounce it that way tonight and you can see he's really got some fun details in him i've got some reference pictures here we'll see how we can match these now mostly there are paintings there's a f the one shot here of the eyeball that is actually i think from the show itself so we'll try and match that as best as we can here on the eye I know you can't see my cursor there we'll make this a little bit bigger as time goes along but real quick here I'll take it to the Blackheart website here so they've got mostly busts in the way of horror they've got some large size got some smaller size here this one right here I think it's the 1 8 size so here, let's go to the Micromania busts, and oh, look what we have here. And it's not just Game of Thrones dragons. You see our Vis Viserion here in the corner, but you've got the Reign of Fire dragon, and you've got Smog, and you've got some of the other dragons as well. We're going to be painting all of these here on the stream. And if you want to see, this is something here that I painted. This was in oils. As you can see, the oil brushers there, I painted this for the Patreon page here. So you get a whole bunch of different types of things. But for here, we are going to do a dragon. We've got a bunch of different paints out here on the palette. We've got some Reaper paints here. It's probably mint green and maggot white. There you are. We've got a couple of... Pro acrylics out here, sky blue and bright warm gray. We're going to try one of the newer Reaper clears here, clear thalo blue. We even have some contrast paints. Also have the, what is it, the Leviathan blue? Yeah, Leviathan blue. It's uh, one I really enjoy. I actually got to get myself some more jars of that. We're also going to add this in here. So this is from scale 75. This is a fluorescent paint. What we're going to do is, it's not just for the eyes, but we're going to see what happens when we add it to other areas. So we're going to throw that down here. We'll get to that in a bit. But what we want to do is snag ourselves a nice big old craft brush here, as we usually use. And what we're going to do is try and start out with some of those contrast paints. Hey, Trevor, how's it going? I thought you... You could get a kick out of this one right here. I think uh, hopefully everybody else will. We're just going to start out with some darker glazes here. Now, I'm actually going to throw this water here so you can see it. But this is the Archelian green here. And that's a little bit of the Leviathan blue. We'll thin it down a touch and we're just going to get down into some of the crevices here with that. We're going to mix and match. We might even do so. I got blue liner out here. We might even do some blue liner glazes. I'm going to go a bit more Leviathan here. That's You can see that's almost more of a purple blue. Now, one thing I noticed here on the eh, spine slash membranes is that these actually were a bit more towards the purple. But overall, the artwork seems to show this as more of a greenish blue, so a little more of a turquoise light. Now, let's just say that we want to, we could just take the Achillean green and other more turquoise colors, and we could position the whole bust just in more of the purple, and then paint the turquoise over the top. That's completely valid what I can also do here is take some of this away now I usually have my makeup sponges handy like so 
So I can take away some of the excess like that. Let's keep going in here. There. Now it's it's been a while since I've had a chance to actually I did paint one of these at Gen Con. We were just sort of messing around with George's and that's George of Blackheart Models. He has his wax based pigments. And we were playing around with those actually on this, which was pretty interesting, I have to say. Now you notice I'm trying to find myself some natural demarcation points here. And by that I mean I'd here just stop where this fin ends. Because if you want to control what's the normal bugaboo with these contrast paints is that they tend to pool up and do some weird things. So you, you do have to exercise a little control over them. Now here we're actually watering these down. Doesn't really matter exactly what the finish is because we're going to be painting some more stuff over the top. But down here in my crevices, this is another reason why I like these craft brushes, especially in the early phases because I've got to be pretty rough with this. I gotta be pretty darn rough with that. So I'm gonna go again with my water. I don't have any of the contrast medium. I think I used actually some of the Green Stuff World Intensity Ink medium once. That seemed to work pretty well. So again, using the sponge, take some away. Now we'll shift over to the other side here. Once again with the somewhat watered down mix. And as soon as I get through this early phase where this is sort of spinning around a lot, then we're gonna try to we'll zoom this in a little bit and we'll work on more specific areas. But I try to make sure never to get bogged down into one area. For those of you that are new to this, you know that is well, one of the first chapters in the Book of Wapple is to be working on the whole miniature all at once. And that comes about in the phrase of work locally, but sink globally. So you might be working in that one spot, but you are thinking about the entire figure all at the same time. You're not just thinking about the face. You're not just thinking about the cloak or the base, you're thinking about everything all at once. Once again, just wipe some of that away. Now, we're, I think we're going to go to more of the Archelian green, especially, I would say, when we get out towards the rest of the face here, like you do. All we're trying to do is just set a tone for this. And you can see the primer on this is the usual Badger Stein or Res. Oh, I forgot to bring it up here with me. Uh, it's the Slate. I just call it Slate Blue. I think there's another actual official name for that particular primer color, but I just call it the Slate Blue. Okay. We're getting there. Could have done this in oils, too, I think think either smog or the ah, maybe the rain of fire dragon I might do that one in oils because that could be some serious fun all right let's get my sponge back here and just wipe away a few areas especially along the spines here that's all we need to set ourselves a little bit of a stage there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that's some of the shyish purple. That's actually a little bit of wildwood. And I'm just going to hit this as much of the base here as I can and still hold on to it because if that's really light, everything next to it's going to look dark. So I'm just going to 
at least this what's in the immediate vicinity. I'm just going to kill that as fast as I can. Because the rest is pretty much going to be covered up by my hands and the, well, blue glove. There we are. Just want to get this out of the way. Here. That gives us a nice, somewhat dark, somewhat neutral base to be operating against. Let's take some time here to zoom. That means I gotta get to my camera controls here. Aha. And we're going to reduce some of our pictures here. Make sure we got some focus. We'll call that good. Go back to the chat. Hey Gary. Ah, uh, first Gary. The trophy of first Gary for the evening. Now we got all these lighter colors out here. Again, some of them are Reaper. Stuff like this one, and uh, these two in particular, the Pro Acrylics, those are going to be more opaque. This is the Mint Green, going to be less opaque. We're going to take that. And this is the fun part where we get to mix. We're going to mix in some of our original preliminary Washes in with a few things there. That's the Achillean Green now with Maggot White. Gives us a few different colors. And let's start to play with them here. And I don't mind if things blend together at this stage because we are we are just trying to get ourselves some fun mid-tones. At this point, none of this is meant to be a highlight. And you can see we will work pretty fast as well. We're also going to try and... See, I'm going to grab a little bit of my more grayed down color here. This is the other interesting thing about the preliminary glaze of the contrast paint is that it stays wet for quite a while. It's almost like we're using oil paints here because it's going to stay wet for a decent amount of time. Now I could suppose I could take a hair dryer and dry that but well that would kind of spoil some of the uh, well we want to wet blend here. Can't wet blend when it's been blow dried. And the the spikes is horns. Well, let's let's get in here with some of the. This is again the the Achillean green mix. And the fun thing is that down in the recesses there, I still have the original wash, which is wet, which means I can pull that right out of there. And since I've got my other colors. Speaking of wet blending, let's let's do a little bit of that. See, I just pull the dark into the light. Now, as soon as you start to do that, your brush gets the darker paint on there, and it's with each brush stroke you're getting more and more of that darker color. You could clean the brush or at least just wipe the brush off. Yeah, that there has to be some kind of, well, I don't think, well, I guess YouTube, there's different sound things, but I'd really rather not have <laughs> a woohoo for the first Gary sound or just me saying first Gary. I think that's adequate. I can even, I've got the maggot white here. I can just keep going with my... A little bit of wet blending along the way, and all of a sudden we have ourselves some nifty little contrast starting to work its way in there. Let's, while I'm thinking about it, just mark that as a little bit lighter. Speaking of which, let's start to 
use here some of our lighter colors here maybe mix a little bit of that into the Achillean green and it's not the same we can't glaze back into this a little bit go back to the darker colors again it's just it's really wild how this covers so much more than those than the Reaper paint it's how they're formulated it's what they're designed to do so it's not a surprise that they do it it's always just interesting to see the comparison of the two side by side I could even take I think I've got some bold titanium white that's also another creature caster slash monument slash slow fuse slash whatever color look at this see where even in these smaller spikes now starting to do a little bit of wet blending there and I really don't mind like I said if my initial glaze colors find their way into what I'm putting on there now it's not an issue I, think I can make that a little bit you know make it a little darker we went back more into our Keelian green slash Leviathan blue mix when I turn this around you'll really see the difference that's for sure so we've got just in a few minutes here this and this is what we had that was our initial playing off of our initial glaze there now if I want to be able to do this same type of thing on the opposite side I should probably get to that now so let's do this again turn him around get some paint into here again feel completely free to just drag some of that initial glaze out here we can lighten it up a bit this is more of that reaper mint green and as we did on the other side we can get into some wet blending here now actually the black heart models it's part of the it's part of a pledge level for dark sword along with dark sword miniatures i think it's called the darkest hearts pledge level haha -ha, clever by me yay and that gets you well obviously not just the dark sword videos but stuff like the Morticia bust and the the species bust that I'll show you later so not all of these dragons are going to be just YouTube live sessions some of them are going to be just special for the patrons and that is actually conveniently scrolling across the screen on the bottom there and basically when you sign up I send you a bunch of links depending on the pledge level you do the army painter pledge level as some people have found out you get oh now well over 200 hours worth of videos covering just about everything it's not it's not just basing or just one type of technique it is pretty much everything homemade grass tufts, object source lighting, non-metallic, true metallic, you name it, freehand. It's to cover everything and I constantly experiment. Later on here in the video I'll show you a few of the more recent experiments. But the, the latest experiment is using candy inks 
metal medium. There. And I also have a ton of Song of Ice and Fire miniatures, too, on the Patreon page. I believe there's four different series based on the Song of Ice and Fire miniatures game. So we're just going to get these. Now these are more compressed because of the way the head is pointed. Now you kind of, this gives you an idea why I like to really work globally because there's stuff in the way here, but I don't have to worry about something hitting something. It does not matter because I can go back into this later and do all kinds of fun stuff. Here I'm just having some fun with that wet blending. See, I can grab some of that purple there, play around with it here, even play around with that down here, and these scales. Because remember, we haven't gone past basically a dark middle tone yet, or a light middle tone, as far as our value scales go. We got all kinds of room to play with. All kinds of room to play with. Now I gotta get into the creature caster. That's the, the sky blue there, because we used some of that on the other side. We wanna make sure we get some into here. It doesn't have to exactly match the other side because you s can't really see both sides at once. I also wanted something that had some decent or just a much more thorough coverage to it. There. Because I don't want everything to just have the greenish blue. I want there to be some variety in color temperature. And you say, well, wait a minute, it's, it's blue. It's all cold. Well, that turquoise greenish blue, well, that's going to be warmer than, say, more of a true blue. Now, this has more red in it. So I'll blow your minds by saying technically maybe this is warmer. There's also the intensity of the color. Right now, this this blue that I'm using here is probably one of the more intense colors that I've used so far. There's a lot of texture in the face. Lots of texture there. Now, I may go back and forth as far as zooming in and zooming out. Not going to do a lot of it because that can sort of hurt your eyeballs after a while. Here, let's. Not going to do too much along the bottom here, at least not right away because I want to make sure that we have time to do the essentials. But we do want to hit these scales here. So I'm going to go back in. That's the original glaze mix there that we used. And we're just going to lighten up these plates on this neck here. And as, as you can see, when you look at the the reference pictures, some of the highlights are almost white. Uh, we've got a long way to go before we're going to be playing with that. White is definitely, uh, it's something that's not, it's not even out in the palette right now. It's something that I just stay away from until it's absolutely necessary to dig it out, and then we get it, and then we can use it. But yeah, this color here that looks so light as I add it in here. Uh, if you were to say a value scale of 1 to 10, uh, this is whew, potentially only a 6. Certainly not much higher than a 5. Uh, 
And I can again I can work in all of the other blues and everything else and purples later. I'm going to start to speaking of intensity. And this is where we're going to maybe find some intensity. That's the fluorescent blue. Just added some of the some of my mint green to that. And that definitely makes that more intense. Kind of thinking about some of the texture that's in here. Speaking of that, I mean, there is a ton of texture on this. Oh, my. There's just bumps and scales and spikes everywhere. All over the place. Now with the initial initial glazes being so still so much so wet, can't really just dust over in the usual shaded base coat fashion, which is more like this. Can't quite do that because that is still that's still wet. So I just move on to other areas here. And again, sometimes that's just going to blend in with stuff that's still wet. I got some of those spikes there. There's going to be times where I just enlarge a reference like this to see exactly what it is. And now the, the mouth is obviously closed. Let me see if I can maybe throw in just a touch of this is just clear purple right here I also have that shyish purple that I can work with but while we wait for some other things to dry let's have a bit of fun here with some purples this is gonna be a obviously a somewhat grayed down purple here makes a little bit of Maiden flesh, actually. So let's put that right in there. And that's going to act as a nice little foil to all of the... right there. Maybe gives it a little bit of transparency. And I don't mean the, the paint, I mean that area, which to me, is, it's kind of indicated it's a little bit transparent. Or at least you can see through it in some way. Now some of these are just, again, going to have to deal with the initial washes still being wet there. Spin this upside down. Uh, get the underside here. Now, with some people, with, with this method, it freaks them out a bit because they're used to that sort of instant gratification of they work only on the face and nothing else, and it doesn't take long for them to see results, which, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Certainly nothing wrong with that, but then when you move on to another area, you may find that your face is, well... It's too light, it's too dark, because that's all you were working on, and you couldn't see what was next to it. That's why I wanted to at least inject some of this purple in here as fast as I could. Uh, what if it really didn't work? What if I didn't like it at this early stage? It's a whole lot easier to get rid of it. That's for sure. Because we've only spent a few minutes adding it in, and it would certainly only take a few minutes to get rid of it. But I also want to have some of that purple elsewhere here. Hey, Bethany, how's it going? I figured this might not be a bad time for you, and it is the weekend, so... Oh, yeah, it's, it's well into Saturday there now. It's darn near Saturday dinner time. 
And I'm even going to get a little bit of purple around the eye here just because this will indicate here just how dark that is because it still looks dark next to the eye. But remember it looked light in the other areas so that that tells you we have not working with any sort of light colors yet. So I'm going to let some purple work its way here too. General idea is you know, the, the, the white chest of a dragon or something like that, we'll just say that the some of this purple color does that trick. There. Now let's see if we can't go a little a little bit lighter with some of our now that this is starting to dry. This is not a dry brush. There is plenty of paint on this brush. There's plenty of it. I'm just using not just a feathered brush stroke, but I'm also, you can see I'm using it at a real angle here. Just targeting certain edges. But now see that purple that's underneath there? That starts to, you start to see that a little bit more. And it starts to, things will start to emerge fast. That's, everyone always says, boy, it looks like nothing, 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 nothing. Boom, it's done. And I think we, for 85% of the time, it just doesn't look like anything. And all of a sudden, that last 15% of the time that you're working, all of a sudden, you say, what in the world? <laughs> Where did that come from? Where's that been hiding? That's just... With this method, you have to have a little bit of self-discipline and, and patience there. And I know, and, and I've seen some other streams, videos, whatever, in the, in the last few days, and the person does talk about how they have to sort of keep a leash on themselves and not get too excited too fast and want to just charge forward or call the thing done when there's really some more some more things that could happen with it I'm going to go back into my more of that mid-tone there so I'm sort of actually liking that area down in there to be a bit on the darker side so we'll try to maintain that at least for now still want that purple to be in there All right, as that dries a wee bit, let's grab ourselves another brush here and let's go into our little mix here of the fluorescent paint. Here, let's make that even brighter. Let's do something with the eyes here. other one and interesting thing is I can't really go too light with this because they're not uh, yeah they're sort of glowing but they're not super and they're like a pair of flashlights although on some of the artwork I've seen they are really really glowing so I don't know maybe we do give them a little bit more of a glow. It it depends. We'll we'll see where where we go from here. You can see it now as I add a few things that actually are genuinely a little bit lighter. The difference that's going to make. But I will be going back in with glazes, and they won't be necessarily super watery glazes. They actually might be 
Well, I, I call them dry glazes. Because in some ways, that's what they are. It's not that traditional, just liquid everywhere. And I guess to try and almost think of shards of ice here, trying to make this as sharp as possible. Sometimes that means some harsher transitions here and there. Now I'm going to, just like I said before, I'm going to go back into the this is the creature caster blue that's definitely much more of a reddish tone. And remember it also it covers a bit more. So some of these spikes here, the, there's going to be color that comes much closer to white almost. But I also don't want to lose out on that green. So there's the Achillean green comes back out again, gets mixed with the mint green. Let's do some work on the horns here. And there's all kinds of ridges here on these horns. Now, some of the latter stages will probably be taking some of that titanium white and mixing it with the Achillean green. That's something I do. It's not just the thing I do with contrast paints. I do it with the Reaper Clears. I started to do it with the, the Creature Caster Transparents. I like taking the basically, for lack of a better term, wash type colors and mixing them with more opaque colors. And once again, that's the Achillean green mixed with some of the Reaper mint green. And we, there's a, some questions asked today. Do I like this kind of paint, that kind of paint? There is no one paint line that I say, oh, I, I have to have this. This is the only thing there is. I, I started to do the contrast paint only because I was asked about them, especially folks on the Patreon page. They wanted to get some easier to find substitutes for the Reaper clear and liner paints because those can be hard to get overseas, outside the U.S., so I tried to find basically the equivalents. I found them in the, especially in the, well, the contrast paints, the Green Stuff World Intensity inks, the the contrast paints, the Pro Acrylics, even the Chimera paints, which, yeah, I'm not sure when those are going to show up. That the post office really messed messed up that job there, because those they were. Basically at our door, of course, while we were in Texas. And despite the hold mail order, <laughs> they just kind of took it back, didn't tell us they were here, and sent them back to, I believe, Spain. Which is less helpful for me trying to paint with those. So I'm going to get down to some of these smaller ones down here start to bring out some of these because we want to build this up evenly here not get too far ahead in any one area and you'll see that I'll, I'll switch back and forth there I had more of the the greenest touch to it this is back towards the the blue a little bit here Now I haven't, like I said, I haven't really had any kind of chance to paint these. I, I, I think I just basically slapped some airbrush primer on one of these and then tried to use George's his pigments on it. So I've 
it's like I've never seen this one before, pretty much. So as I paint this, I go, oh, okay, that's that detail there. Didn't know that was there. Oh, I didn't know that was there either. Again, the beauty of this is that I can make changes as I see fit. Let's let's throw out something. Oh, hey, John, how's it going? See, there's something that's a little bit lighter, and you can see how that stands out right away. And that is still nowhere near white. And we're going to stay away from white for quite a while here. That really is that sort of final dramatic pizzazz that you add to your figure. But this starts to bring out a little more. See, we, we have some that start to form here, but then... Oh, that's good. Hopefully... Oh, you didn't really... Didn't miss too much. We've only been at this maybe about a half hour-ish or so. We really are just in the opening rounds. Because this will be going at least till 4.30, if not longer depending on what it is I'm, I want to do with this guy. I, I do want to show the, the glazing back and forth for sure. Now, now I can start to bring out these because they were definitely looking a little dark. I can also take some of this maiden flash. We've got our somewhat of a it's basically the wild wood there. Let's see if we can't do something with some teeth here. Just indicate these. Because remember, I want to think globally here. And whatever's going on with the teeth, that could have a big impact on what I choose to do with the blue highlights around it. And we'll still, we're going to be going back and forth on the teeth as well. I just want to indicate that they're there right now instead of having a big old just dark smile on them. <laughs> that's, that's not what we're looking for. Now, I've even got a little bit of that that sort of worked its way into my turquoise. I just got home from work, well, I, I suppose you and I, we, we both work, we both work the nights. Here. And the brush that I'm using now, it's the, the Cotman's that you've seen me using a little bit more and more. There was the really nifty sale. Actually, I've got to go back again and check and see if Dick Blick still has the Cotman's on the Super Sale. Because they're not going to be Windsor Newton Series 7s. They are still Windsor Newtons. Alright, let's get, make sure I don't lose track of my... I always call it True Blue. Actually, there is a Reaper color very much like this that I just made that is called True Blue. And the idea is to keep constantly shifting this from one type of, you know, that the bluish green to maybe now something that's almost slightly on the reddish side. And I might even uh, see the the spikes here. They're actually showing as as dark. Eh, let let's do something like. I just want to see what I want to do with these. Yeah, yeah, I might go with that. And then we'll we're gonna have to even lighten up the purple just a touch. So that's something we're gonna 
play around with the top of the head. I want to see how much lighter do I want to get that. Now, these his horns here. Like I said, plenty of these ridges and texture on these, so we definitely want to take advantage of those. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. This is more of a liner brush. The difference between the liner and the spotter is the liner, obviously the bristles are longer. The tip is the same size as a comparable spotter brush. And just the advantage is that it holds more paint, and the bristles will flex a little bit more than with a spotter. And it lets you do, well, these long brush strokes like this one, there, like that. It's tough to do that with a spotter, as in really tough. So again, what looks like white here is not white. It's actually a bluish white. It's that, that Reaper color, maggot white. Once again, getting in some of our light reddish blue here. I'm going to go back to this. Again, that's the fluorescent paint there. Mixing some of the maggot white with it. Gonna try and make the eyes just that much dark uh, lighter here, not darker, because we'll go over the top. I'm gonna even go lighter in here. Let's see, what do we want on his, his nose? Seems to be pretty bright. At least the highlights on there. Now I know with uh, the Drogon, there's there was different colors around his his mouth and around the eyes. Will we do the same thing on this guy? Obviously, nowhere near as extreme as the some of the pinks that I saw on the Drogon when I looked at the the reference pictures. Or the ones that I could find, anyway. And let's see, how many of the dragon busts are there overall? There are, I believe, five. There's three from... There, there you have, obviously, the Viserion here, the, the Drogon, and then there's the Rhaegar, whichever... Again, I don't have the little piece of paper right in my hand that has the name of it. So you got those three, and then obviously Smog, Lord of the Rings, and then the Reign of Fire dragon, which I believe is the only one that has his mouth open. So that should be fun. Looking forward to that one. And I think that's definitely the one I want to try in oils. I think, oh gosh, was it on Amazon? I saw it's probably some kind of, I don't know, a cheap resin vinyl thing, whatever. And it's it's got this Viserion, and he's he's spouting the ice or whatever out of his mouth, and he's flying. That there was a part of me that was almost tempted. Well, I could grab that and see if I could repaint it. And actually give it a little bit more depth because obviously something like that is just it's a real quick airbrush with a little maybe it's dry brushed in one or two places that's about all that's going to happen to it right here i'm gonna just use my finger here and scrub in some lighter colors there I'm going to check my brightness here. 
Might knock that down just a touch. There. A few more lights along here. Now this gets too too light too quickly. Well, it's going to really kind of mess up the whole purpose of the lighter colors here because the darker this stuff is in the backdrop, the more my lighter colors that I'm adding now are going to stand out. It's just it's only logic. Sounds like the name of a book or something. Oops, covered up my chat. Gonna bring that back. So I do try and keep track of what's going on there, but sometimes, like with this, there's there's a lot going on here at the same time. And there's also a time delay, at least seven seconds. So if I don't respond right away, it's not me ignoring you, it's me probably not even seeing the message. Now I've tried time and again to put the chat up on the regular screen. And when it does work, it only works for a little while and then it just stops. And it's really not worth the extra hassle in the beginning, taking time away from this try and screw around with that chat me typing passwords and everything else if that process was a little bit faster and easier then I might try it so still have underneath these I still have that purple there now see I like this thing where it's these little waves that kind of go down like this and they get crisscrossed here. So I'm going to try and do that on this side too. That also kind of helps it get more of the icy look as well. And I'm still going to, like I said, work back and forth. So that now mimics more of that, even though the sculpt is definitely... It's different on this side than on the other side. There's no doubt about it. So I'm going to go back to that, that same purple we were talking about here. Let's see what happens when I glaze a little bit of that into some of these crevices here. And this is what I mean by that sort of subtle, gentle glaze. It doesn't have to be beat them over the head. And I think you can sort of see, see where it's glistening, that that is where you can see more of the purple there. We're going to even reinforce some of those ridges there. That's not the only type of glaze we can do. We can go back into our Achillean green here and we can do some even in here. And you can see how tightly controlled the glaze is. Like I said it does not always have to be just a, a flood of wash colors all over the place. Take some more water here, thin that down. And you see how that starts to affect some of these scales here. This is where we sneak in a different type of contrast. We're actually I, technically, this is a red opposing green here because we got the reddishness of the purple, which is another highly sophisticated painting term that I seem to always, for whatever reason, use. But balanced against the this essentially a green that we just put down.
Let's get in more of these scales here because if it's not a perfect brush stroke, there was, I can get that scale back in there. You saw what I did, how easy it was to darken things back up again. Really easy. But these spines and spikes here, certainly nowhere near as light as these guys up here. And that is that Reaper Maggot White. It is not actual, it's not a, the titanium white that I've mentioned before. It's not that, we're not using that yet. Going to lighten these up again on the ends here. And I think you can see the difference here. We've got that the purple down there in the eye socket balanced against that teal that we've added since. And for those of you that, that missed the intro on this, the this Dragon Bust of Vizirian, it's from Blackheart Models. Now here is, this is the Drogon here. So this one will probably, this will be a Patreon video most likely right here. Be doing that one. And then later I'll show you the the next one. Smog, I have not actually put that one together yet. Now these, obviously very spiky. The Smog is wyvern, wyvern, however you pronounce it, but it's more like one of those. It's more of a skin instead of all a bunch of spikes. And speaking of said spikes, we are going to, I'm going to actually take a little bit of that purple, some of the Achillean green, and we'll start to work down here on the underside. Important to do so, but by mixing that purple with the Achillean green, it quite literally grays it down because green and purple basically make a gray I know people that have seen a lot of my videos they know I love to that's kinda of my trademark way to make gray I love taking the purple and the green kinda of like what I'm doing here and it basically makes it a gray like I said this, nothing really this is not the most glorious part of the dragon there but it's part of the dragon and we have to think about all these different parts now I am going to see what I can do with a somewhat more here I'm gonna lighten it up a touch there just get this in the one the center of these membranes here and see what that does. I think it's gonna provide a nice little bit of extra interest there. Yeah, see so just in the in the middle of each one of these guys. Working right over that initial glaze that we did mostly with the contrast paint. Now if I was going to use say the Reaper clear and liners I would have taken blue liner, green liner, done the exact same thing. Wouldn't have been any different. Been all the same thing. So see I'm actually taking a little bit of a lighter purple here. I 
Uh, I do have to take sometimes a little bit of license away from the reference pictures. Because we're working from well, multiple sources and for the most part they're either just paintings or computer renderings. See, we're going to sneak a little bit of that purple even into the horns here. Even sneak, like I said, some of that lighter color into there. See how we've got a nice little juxtaposition there of the purple next to that teal. So it's not just an endless wave of teal everywhere. Because too much of a good thing is, well, just too much. Let's work our way some of this purple even into here. Into here, see, that gives it a little bit more interest, a little more depth. What we used to do was just, if it was teal, we would, the, the lightest color would be very light teal and the darkest color would be very dark teal. We didn't think to take something like purple and throw that in there. Just, if there was a 2D painting, I would have done it. But it was a miniature, and we didn't know that, well, we could we could do that, much less should do that. So we're going to do the same thing on this side. And I'm targeting this area right in here. Instead of it just being a darker teal, now it's got a little bit of purple into it. A little bit of difference. I'm going to go back to... Eye here and what's around it. Once again, work in a little more of the purple there around his eye. I think, yeah, let's maybe go a tad lighter here and if it's too much I can always just knock it down but since this is the clear purple and the reaper the reaper clear purple and the reaper maiden flesh it's got that translucency where it's not going to overpower not gonna look too stark like, like okay oh look there's a layer of lighter paint here and all it takes is a little bit of the, little bit of water there. I think we want the light to hit this too. So basically, we've been at this thing maybe about an hour, and it literally was just primer. That's all it was. And I think we've been able to advance that fairly well. Just trying to show a few different... I always try and show something that's, I guess, new. Or if it is, you know, there's... Just like plot lines and movies and books and whatever, there's, what, seven, seven actual original plot lines, something, along, something like that. There's only so many oh, dazzling new techniques or whatever to show. But different combinations, there's certainly that. Now where the, the neck is more expansive here, it's a little bit easier to work with those. I'm going to start to maybe lighten some of these up. I think along, there's basically a line here that I want to follow. I also need to start thinking about these spikes being a little bit lighter, so we'll do that too. There. And all the while, yeah, that 
that 1 to 10 value scale where as far as 1 being the lightest we're barely at a 4 I would say here but because of all of the shading that we did early on this looks darn near like a highlight and it's not we haven't even we're nowhere near maggot white yet much less the titanium white and that's really going to have a dramatic impact, like I said. So now we're going back into the, that's just with some of the Achillean green in there. I know everybody loves to have dozens and dozens of colors to choose from, but and this is the whole cornerstone of the shaded base coat where you just take a few simple colors and you're able to create a lot of complex combinations with a few colors. It's so much easier to remember. It's easier to control. How hard is it to remember Achillean green mixed with mint green or maggot white or whatever? As opposed to, uh, you, I found five different teals, each one lighter than the next. Or if you could just mix and make your own. That's, that's the thing that I'm really trying to emphasize with this. When people see me do it with the clears and liners, they don't. sometimes it's not necessarily apparent what it is that I'm doing with those. I think the contrast paints really do <laughs> show that. See, we're only just now, we're maybe at mint green. Take a tiny bit of the maggot white. So we're still maybe at a somewhat, we'll call it a dark two. <laughs> that's, that's an interesting thing, but still nowhere near white. I know maybe on camera it might look white. But it's every one of these little projects like this, the, the lighting is always different on each one. There's just no way to find one lighting system to rule them all. Now that's that's the maggot white that's in there. And it starts to bring out yeah some of the texture within those plates. Also don't want to this is the mistake and I've talked about this before too something that we did early on and even in the midpoint even in the, still in the mid 2000s and stuff he, we would shade something and it would be very nicely shaded but it would be the same that the darkest dark was essentially the same color as the lightest light which yes you have shading but you have no depth there which is why this is why we're we got the purple and the, the more of the greenish blue all sort of next to each other I, I wasn't doing that back in the day I didn't really think of it or, or know that that's something I could do or should do Uh, we're still yeah, working with that. This is more of the, I don't want to say ultramarine blue, but more of a sky blue. This is the more opaque monument pro acryl paint. There is a, a creature caster figure that I'm doing with all, uh, in a very similar way. If I can, later on, grab him and show you, I will. But for now, we're just trying to keep our focus on the sky here. Because there's lots of texture to bring out. And when you have this much real subtle texture, it can be easier to bring that out with glazes than with a bunch of just opaque brush strokes. No doubt about that. 
Let me see if I can just go a little bit lighter, even on the eyes here. Because what I, I want to see is can I do like that one picture off on the side here. Can I do that thing with the some blue glazing over the top of it? That should be fun. I think a maggot white next to what we've done looks almost like it is actually white. The liner brush, that's me. Well, you see, I don't have to go back to the palette every two seconds. That It not only saves time, it kind of saves a little bit of energy. It's a little less frenetic. Hey, Tyler, how's it going? Well, let's see, it's 3.08. We started at uh, basically around 2. So this is basically an hour. And... This is about the same primer that we had. So that's the Drogon. He looked like that right about an hour ago. And now he looks a wee bit different. And, well, obviously, you can go back and watch that first hour later on. This has been, believe it or not, it's all about color temperature. Even though this thing looks like it's just all that icy blue. We're using several different blues. We've been using purple. You can see I think more of the purple back here and along this part of the ridge line. Here, let's gonna grab some of that shyish purple, purple and mix it with the clear purple. And we're going to bring that out a little bit more along that ridge line there. Can't do some. Find a few lighter spots here. All the while trying not to kill that purple that's back there. So there's some more spiny, spiky bits right here that we're trying to lighten. Uh, technically, to me, I consider this still sort of a base coat in a way. That's that's the whole thing of the, the shaded base coat, is that it, it takes base coating to a slightly different level than most people think of it. Now I'm going to go back to that, that true blue. I am going to take, this is some of that clear Thalo blue. I'm going to take a little bit of that, get some of that into my mix here. A little more maybe. Changes that up. It's not necessarily just about darkening it down. It's about finding ourselves another color of blue here to work with. That Thalo blue that you're seeing, that is what I'm going to, I think, mix in with the fluorescent blue and do some glazing and such on those eyes so here just working on a little bit of the underside I know that's not the most interesting part of the bust here I'm gonna get some of these Ridge line, they're almost like chains of beads here. <laughs> but I need to do something with them. They can't just sit there with no shading on them. Who knows, maybe I shade them darker again. But at least for now, I gotta do, gotta do something on those. Now these, you will have to do some green stuff work on these, or at least some plastic putty. I did a little bit of each, because there's so many scaly surfaces, and just the way these go together. There's not a lot of parts. There's 
four parts ish something like that head neck and the two horns slash ears so just the four parts but the way they go together it's always best to have yourself some like that, green stuff plastic putty I probably could have even used my super heavy gel okay yeah this is definitely I needed to hit this stuff again it's not really the most intriguing thing in the world to just see one dot of paint after another applied but it kind of has to be done and when I do the tutorials for the patreon page geez I don't know if I've ever really talked about this it's a lot like what we're doing here it's you see every brush stroke there is no and if, there's no speed ramping there's no voiceovers unless it's a terrain thing and I'm making a ton of noise or if there's an airbrush being used then sometimes I have no choice but I try to show absolutely everything none of this well we put it in the oven and look an hour it comes out it's just done well wait a minute what did you do in some of those places it would be nice to actually see it that that's something that I see I don't get to watch whole painting videos I just see kind of parts of them and I'll see well it's either speed ramped or whatever and it's even I having done this for 20 years sometimes I go well, what were they what did they do in that intervening step that I can't see so when I do those I just call it recorded videos and there's some of them just available on the YouTube channel just to see it's like this you are seeing the entire process there's <laughs> no brush stroke left behind you see it all because like I said what's the point and you just kind of being left seeing 50% of it or 80% of it or 40 and some of the videos I see I'm, I'm thinking I'm getting 30 percent of it because it's hard when you're doing a voiceover and I know I've had to do a few of them uh, if there was one the mic wasn't turned on I didn't realize it and there was no sound so I had to do a voiceover and that it just it was very difficult to try and think all the the thought process that was going into it and I I was just kind of reacting to what I was seeing it was like trying to commentate on a race so that's why I try and here let's, let's do some go back to some glazing here now this is the this is the dark blue from the creature caster stuff here again just making a little glaze out of it and that's going to have a touch of a greenish effect there that's why I think it'll be interesting to do maybe the the drogon in oils because this will be more of a pin wash as opposed to kind of a standard where it's at to manipulate this a little bit more because the capillary action is very different that's just how it is it's it, the water and the oils that's what I like about the oils is yeah the the extra working time it is fantastic that's great but there's other subtle things especially like that capillary action I just told you about that you just don't get with the acrylics and it, it's a fun change so yeah the, the drogon and oils that'll be for the patreon page let's see because there are certain parts of that where I might want to let it dry 
and then pick it up again and that's a little bit easier to do and just a regular recorded video I don't necessarily like to chop up things into multiple YouTube live sessions because there's some kind of magic in seeing something like this from, from the start instead of okay well here's episode three when it's part of a, a regular recorded series like that you're more likely to have seen the first couple episodes instead of well and I've I've had it happen to me I guess that's what what kind of brought it to my foremost of my mind was that I, I found something when I was on part three or four and it was more like a, of a streaming type thing and I went well okay it would have been neat to see all the other parts first now blue liner the shyest purple this is gonna be much darker we've been going lighter and lighter and then with midtones, let's let's have some real serious darks here. Really dark. Because we haven't done that yet either. And what that's gonna do is it really locks in the dimensions of the eye there. I can still even uh, make a glaze out of this. Just basically taking some water here. That's how it is. I don't really use a lot of the the mediums and such. That and those familiar with the old painting pyramid days. I used to do that all the time. I would use oh, what was that? The flow improver. I would use that a lot. But once I just started to paint this many figures, it wasn't really practical. And then I basically started using water because A, it was free, and B, it was everywhere. I do, well, classes on the road. Oh, actually, yeah, that's, well, Historicon is a long time from now. We're talking July of 2020. But that convention has just been added to the list. I think that's in Pennsylvania and I'm really looking forward to that I'll certainly have the cruel seas ships that I've been working on my well I don't know how many of my 17 bolt action armies that I'm working on will be there but a fair portion will be to say the least so this is back to that that's that dark mix that I just made see I can Start to go in here and start to create some more contrast, some more separation. Finding some of those little small ridge lines and details. Starts to make my mid tones look more like mid tones and less like darks. Where can we f find a list of your con classes? Uh, well, let's see. Dragonfall, that's coming up. Geez, only a couple of weeks from now. That's here in the Chicago area. I think it's Elmhurst. But you can look up there. I, I believe that's going to be basing classes. The, let's see, Great Game Hole Con, that's in Madison. That's the next week. I'm going to be doing more of a Fort Wapple right there. At Historicon, that's also, at least that's the initial plan, is more of a Fort Wapple type thing. Because this way I can, it's almost like I'm doing YouTube Lives, but in person. Just like I did at ReaperCon, where I have the, the Hover 8 cam set up and it's hooked into a monitor. I will be doing classes at Adepticon, I believe, well, three of non geek nation i have the one geek nation class that i'm doing that's always on thursday but now i've got i think it might even be four two on friday one on saturday no one on sunday one of those is going to be basing one of them is going to be one of those 
four plus hour seminar type things because that's going to be the oils so we can really really get into it and every, anytime I do a class like say those those ones at Adepticon I try to have actually a USB drive with some f either if we're painting a miniature it's that miniature and that way you c you can have that after the class and because how many times do you you take a class or whatever and you walk out and you go well geez <laughs> you can't remember everything especially when you're taking multiple classes this way you get the live class where you can ask questions but then you still have for afterwards you still have something that you can consult later on I know in the, in the case of that Geek Nation class this year it was really good I had that because my voice was really shot and this way they already had a two and a half hour it was longer than the class <laughs> yeah the video that I handed them to watch was half hour longer than the class so it basically turned a two hour class into almost a five hour class let's get out to the out exterior here with not just these darker glazes but maybe even some lighter ones too now these eyes I want to do something with these because like I said we got that picture over there so I'm gonna take my fluorescent here we'll start with that so fluorescent paints already gonna be very translucent well, let's do some glazing over the eyes here so I'm gonna get my focus adapted to being closer get rid of some of the excess and we'll do that over the eye there we're gonna do the same thing on this side and then a little less translucent I just lost my I'll have to try and make it to one of them yeah I think uh, I think there should be space in the Dragonfall classes there I, I don't know how their system works I just it's been so long since well say the Adepticon classes since the door would be open and sometimes people would say do you have a spot and we'd say yeah there's only 10 bodies in the room for a 12 person class come on in now let's get that and just put this in right here right there give him his lizard eye and I'll probably do the little thing of taking either the art code or some kind of water effects and put that over the top of it to give it that transparency that that gloss look I'm gonna do another glaze over the top of that it also changes the timber a little bit I like to say timber of the because it, it shows up against that purple and speaking of purple we are going to got some fresh clear purple out there and we're gonna go back into the eyes here I can actually see it in the in that one picture down on the bottom there I can really see some of the purple in there I'll just try and make that a little bit lighter here this side take some of that away I want to get this eye and I move that a little closer for you and not a straight up line it's trying to put in a little bit of texture here a little bit of texture there let's do that on the other side 
Get his face up a little closer. A little more texture in here. And I can always darken that back down. I'm just going to grab myself a quick little drink of something here. And I apologize if that makes the sound of swallowing. But I only got so many hands. It'd be great if I was more zinchy and had more hands. I could certainly prep miniatures way faster. I'm, I mean, I'm all for zinch. Actually, that's the latest army painting series that I'm working on. Is that what the Cypher Lords and obviously very zinchy. Yeah, that's what, series 14? I can show you the bases in a little while here, but right in the middle of my purple colors that I'm adding. And we'll we'll go back to our the blues and the greenish blues, but this is where I'm just trying to get I got more depth in there. So I'm gonna change my focus back here to something a little bit further away. Bingo. Because I can't keep having them quite that close. Now I'm going to go almost just a little more with the maiden flesh and purple here. Where are we at? Just going to find myself some light areas along the, the skin and then maybe on the teeth as well. I have to sort of draw in the teeth a little bit here. Yeah, I'm going to have to just draw all of these guys in. I, I can see a hint of the texture there. All right. Going back, now I'm going to add a little bit of the, it's the maggot white. That's to the fluorescent paint. And go back in there. I'm going to grab my chat back here. Then maybe even a little bit lighter. And I'm going to grab myself a smaller brush to start thinking about the... See how we're starting to get the... It's not just a flat surface there. We're starting to break that up just like I see in the image. And then I'm going to take that same blue. I'm going to start to work that into some of these other areas too. Do a few of these ridge lines here. I see this one on the other side. I think I did most of them, but I haven't done really any of them on this side. I think I, I had started, but then I ended up just taking the darker blue and the purple and just kind of wiping that out because it was easier to go back in here after the fact. Like so. Got some of these to do here. Just down the line. Now this 
in here. We, so we, we added some stuff there and made that interesting. I'm going to do something similar back here. So this is some of the, again, the purple here. And it's funny because it looks so light here, but it's really, it's a dark color. It is not light whatsoever. Uh, it's barely on the value scale, maybe a, maybe a 5. If, if you're going 1 to 10, with 1 being the lightest, 10 being the darkest. I do try and, and bring up the, the value scale thing as, as much as I can. All right, now we've got this somewhat far along. Let's really start to hit this with some lighter colors. I'll just orientate them this away. And you can see now what I meant all along about these spikes, there's a long way that we can go with these. You see how much lighter this is. And once again, now the titanium over this wouldn't be dramatic, not quite as dramatic as what this is. But you can see the difference one side to the other. And I'm going to find myself some Highlights here on the little scales on the mouth. And these here, maybe not as light down towards the bottom here as these ones on the top. And I'm just going to stay with the liner brush for right now there because it see that nice soft long stroke that lets me do you're just not going to get that with a spotter that's that's not what it does it quite literally is made for well spots not, and that's why there's a difference between a spotter and a liner brush. I'm going to try and get this a little closer for you here. It is one of those things where sometimes for me to be able to do this long arcing brush stroke like this I have to hold it in a certain way and that's maybe not ideal for keeping it on screen or at least in your you know directed towards you so I, I apologize for that it it's gonna be inevitable in every video especially something like this you know, if it's just a regular 28 millimeter figure not so much Now I'm starting to even on these little of the smallest spikes, starting to think about some highlights there. Starts to maybe look a little bit even more frozen. Oh, hello, Laurent. How's it going? That's 10.30 there in the morning. Yeah, that's a... Uh, oh, it's Sunday morning. That's right. I'm somehow I'm thinking it's Saturday morning. But thanks for joining in. Yeah, we've been at this... Oh, an hour and a half ish. Man, doing the black heart models. Part of the God, geez, it's gonna be a whole dragon series. There's five of these things. I somehow I thought there was only a couple, and then as I was prepping these, I, I'm looking to find the other two. Game of Thrones dragons, and I'm I said, the smog. Wait a minute, forgot all about that one, and then somehow I forgot about my favorite one, the Reign of Fire dragon. 
So there's certainly going to be plenty of dragons on here and on the Patreon page. And I guess if you want to... Yeah, the lesson that I learned with the you know, YouTube and getting the notifications, I didn't click on the bell or the all notifications thing. And how many times, I don't know, someone that I subscribed to, I'd find out, well, they were either live or I just didn't see their video for two or three weeks. I said, wait a minute, I subscribed to these guys. And apparently you've got to hit the thing for all notifications. Not quite sure why you would think that, okay, I subscribed to them. That should be adequate, but apparently it's not. Now, I, I will try and do another one of these. It's It's been a little while, I think a few weeks, since I've done one that's a little more, I don't know, Central American time zone friendly. So I will try and do that. It's a little difficult because Kathy does her Twitch streaming four days a week from, what, 3 to 5 central time. So that kind of wipes out the daylight hours for me. Here, let's get ourselves a little more highlights on these spikes. I don't know if it's as cold in France as it is here. I'm guessing it's not 35 degrees there. And I'm pretty sure there's not a few feet of snow like there's some here. Not here, there's not two feet of snow, but out west, there's some, there's some of the white stuff. Oh, hey there. Uh, Nika Zino. Oh, and Ab. Uh, Abhinav. So if I mispronounce a name, I do apologize. Man, I was really, when I saw these things at Gen Con, I saw he was putting them in his, in his case, and this is George. This is of Blackheart Models fame. And we're in the, we're at Gen Con there, and he's pulling these things out and putting them in his case. And I said, wait a minute, where did those come from? Because they were brand new. He had just gotten those in at the time. As soon as I laid eyes on those, I said, okay, yeah, I, I need me some of those. Now, I have some dinosaurs. Those are all prepped and ready to go. But just something nifty about the dragons. I mean, everybody loves dragons. But there's a whole bunch of black heart busts that I've got lined up to do here let's reinforce some of these darks here but before we make that all just dark guess what I'm gonna throw in a touch of the purple too like you do right in there Because when a color goes somewhere, it must go everywhere. That's pretty much chapter one of the Book of Wapple. There. And like I said, not going to focus too much on the underside because there's so much to do and so little time. And I... <laughs> I just keep going and going for hours and hours, but it's not necessarily easy for you guys to be able to watch a video for that long. So I'm going to go back to that Achillean green. Speaking of darks and mid-tones, let's see if we can do some here on some of the spikes and ridges. like that maybe here maybe here 
14 Celsius, that's got to be 64-ish in Fahrenheit. Uh, maybe it's between 62 and 64, maybe. Because I think to be in the 70s, it's got to be at least 20. Uh, maybe it is only... Maybe it is only about 60 degrees, 61, 62 degrees. I always like to take my guess at, at the Celsius Fahrenheit translation. I do know that in many places here, it was darn near, well, not darn near, it was in the 40 Celsius range and then dropped into the 0 Celsius range really fast. Hopefully this is on screen for you guys. I keep forgetting he has this long thing going back this way. Yeah, and just creating this is more of the Achillean green. Yeah, I want that to go right up next to the more of those purple washes and such that we did. I'm going to do a quick little, on the underside of these, very quickly. Yeah, here it's just been perpetual rain. I haven't actually seen stars at night pretty much for all this entire year so far. That's 57, okay. Because I usually, when I'm watching the or catching the Aussie rules football, it's in the, well, it's usually in the 50s there, and it's somewhere between 12 and 16 degrees Celsius or something, so okay. There. I'm going to get some of these spikes a little lighter here. These ones that are underneath them. I'm not going to mess around with the base at all because, well, I'm holding it in my hand. You'll never see it. So I think we can dispense with the, with the base. It's just rocks. I am going to try and make some of these later I think. I know initially I was thinking of those should be maybe darker. But this is the whole point of the shaded base coat is you know I can just make a mid-course correction and let's say heck what if I don't like those being lighter I can just throw some glazes over them and they're darker again. So when I do stuff with the object source lighting, that's why the object source lighting is established as soon as possible. So it's something that you can keep playing with and, and modify. So many people, they won't do it because they're afraid they're going to screw up their miniature. Because they've painted the whole thing first and now they're going to superimpose object source lighting or freehand on it. Oh, thanks so much. It's, like I said, I I wish I had kind of come to the realization many, many, many years ago that, yeah, okay, you can really shade something really nicely. Lots of gradations. But, boy, I certainly didn't think about, like, this, this purple that I'm just going to throw in here. Because, here, let's do this. Let's go back to my controls here we are gonna go zoink so all the shading is still there it's all still there very apparent but as we bring this back what do you start to see you start to see that purple sneak its way in there and it just like, like you say that's what gives you that extra little subtle kick a little bit of subtle interest there 
that's what I love about the the XSplit here, the the program that I use. It not only lets me take you to different sites and and such, but I can do that whole little trick where I kill the color. Actually, with the hover eight cameras, I add some more highlights here. I can do that now live in in the classroom or in the classic Fort Wapple. Get some. Yeah, I like to use my finger. Don't be afraid to finger paint now and then. Again, just these nice long sweeping brush strokes. Gonna get the chat back here and now I'm into some of that mint green. And that's from Reaper. And if you want to see pictures of the finished stuff, there's there's the blog. You can go there. That's just WapeliusBlogspot.com. That that address has also been floating across on the bottom of the screen too. But you can go to Instagram. Uh, guess what? I'm Wapelius there too. That's just W A P P E L L I O U S. That's at Instagram. You follow me there, and then you can see some of the finished photos of the stuff that's been done, and the videos, and the live sessions. It's it's a little bit easier to actually do do it there on Instagram than on the blog. Cuz with the blog I've got to resize images and make them more web friendly and write lots of text. So if people wonder why there's been much more Instagram than blog lately. That is the reason why. And we're doing the same thing we did on the other side. We're trying to get some of the lightest highlights on these scales in a certain point along the center line right here, just like there. And see how it gets a little less and less there? But what I'm going to do is take some of this true blue here. That's the, the Creature Caster Monument uh, Pro Acryls. We're going to do a little bit more in the way of lights down here, too. Is that we've got some of these other surfaces pretty well in hand. So with those, you know, I know what the, the lightest light is going to be. That's why I kind of backed off of these. Because if I highlight the heck out of these things and then they basically overpower the face, well, that's not super productive. That's kind of the opposite of productive. That's the anti-productive. Now, the idea here is I'm just going to add in these lights, and then I'm going to just do a glaze over the top of them, pretty similar to what we've done on the, the face a few times. It's a little bit easier again to do that and then see what we can do here is our glaze color is it's kind of a dirty glaze. But what is it? It's actually the original glaze that went there in the first place on that, that very first layer. And now see we just sort of tone it down a little. We instead of looking like a bunch of separate brush strokes, it's more incorporated. Here yeah, let's do a similar thing over here. What I'm going to do is even make the pictures that much smaller. Get those out of the way so I have even more room for him. Now here where I had to 
do a little bit of green stuff on the, the joint in between the two areas. I'm going to paint a little bit of shape now. So I'm back to the these membranes here. Let's maybe add a little bit more of a light color to that. And as I said, don't be don't be shy about using your finger to blend the paint. Now I'm gonna try and get some of that purple into here again. Maybe even a touch of it over here. Again, color goes somewhere, has to go everywhere. You will hear me echo that refrain over and over again. It's the one way to remember it, is to repeat it several times. I think I want some of that, yeah. These little spines along the nose ridge line, they're gotta have some of those. Now the other side, what do we need to do there to make sure that it stays in union with the left side of the face? You can see how watery this is. It's very watered down at this point. I am going to just hit these. Got a couple of these. They never really got this lighter version there. That's all I need. I just noticed that as I was working on some other things, like right here. Let's get some of these purple extensions right into there. So I know, uh, what is it, monochromatic, right, or, or the, I really do not like the limited palette term because it sounds like you are limiting yourself, but you're really, you're not. I know there's plenty of stuff going on. Look at all the different colors of blue that we have here. We've used all of them. We've really worked our way through the range of blues. Some that's more greenish, some that's almost purple. And now this is more of the, that's the that true blue. I'm trying to do even smaller, little subtle dots here. Because we've got all of the the major stuff has plenty of different layers. So now we gives us the luxury of then doing these little subtle hints of additional textures. And they're not going to end up standing out too much. Here, let's. I want to get some of these a little lighter, a little more of the regular blue in there, maybe a little slightly less purple. These guys need to bring these out too. Just using maggot white to lighten this. As I said, it is not white. We still haven't used any actual white on this yet. Still haven't even put it on the palette. I just had to remind myself of that too just now. That Oh yeah, that's right. There is no white on the palette yet. There's basically a bluish white here. But that's it.
So I can even, you know, now I can maybe go to some of the uh, smaller brush here. Let's do that. See if we got something that's a little on the smaller side here. Oh, so this is more of a spotter here. See how much shorter the, the bristles are? And it, it definitely makes it much more difficult see, to do those long lines. You just cannot do those long sweeping lines that you can with the liner brush. But it, it's, it's serving a different function here. Let's see, I'm going to tilt him over this way so you can see a little bit more of him in the frame. See, but this is what the spotter is going to do a little bit more easily. And that is, yeah, just working on these smaller little tiny scales within scales. Much more difficult to do that with the larger liner brush. But, but this all started out in the usual way with our craft brush. Yeah, well, they're just, every time I look at this, oh, there's more spines there. Oh, look, there's more spines over there. Oh, look, there's more spines over there. Maybe at this point I might break out the white just to show. Oh, now let's let's hit some of these scales first before we start thinking of white on things like his horns here. Not what the heck. Let's throw some out. And this is the. Oh, it's bold titanium white, not pure titanium white. So let's get that. I'll find a spot for it, maybe here. So it's two things. It's not just white. It's also it's one of the pro acryls, which means it will cover very intensely. And oh my goodness, holy smokes! I don't know if this shows up on camera. But this is so much lighter. Wow. <laughs> oh my goodness. It'll really show up in definitely in a photo here. It's making the, the maggot white and every other so called highlight color on that one to ten value scale. It's making that look like a almost a three by comparison. Wow. That is unbelievably intense. Let's see, that's still, I'm going to rotate it around so you can see that a little better. Wow. I just, I knew it was going to be a difference, but that first brush stroke, I thought, holy smokes. That is really intense. And now you know why that was not out on the palette before. Uh, actually, yeah, there's, a, and I've been using it in some form or another. I've been using a magnifier light, even when I was doing my 2D art. Now, this one is only a three times magnifier. It's a typical kind of Office Depot special, maybe $40 on Amazon. It, it's one of the reasons why, if you wonder why sometimes the lighting is a little more harsh on this, it's because that's the magnifier light. Uh, I wish I didn't. I, I could use some other light, and I've tried using combinations. I do have a little bit of a system where I can sort of get away from the magnifier light, but it's kind of an essential. Now, aside from just seeing the things easier, I do this... Well, let me see. Uh, I've been basically 
painting since 10 o'clock this morning. So, yeah, it's been another one of those, what, 16-hour days. Eye strain is a thing. Eye strain is definitely, because I've seen it with people that, you know, they, they've been at work and then they try and do the miniature painting thing and they just are too exhausted and they get headaches or whatever. I really do recommend using a magnifier light. I think it's actually saved my eyesight over the years, that's for sure. It's reduced the eye strain massively. And and it's the key is a magnifier light, not just a magnifier. Because uh, there's no shadows cast on this whatsoever by surrounding lights. So the light is the lens. So I, I do recommend the magnifier lights. That's what I loved about the, the hover cam is that it lets me use the magnifier light, but it doesn't have the harshness. That's really, that's nice. Let's see, there, let me get back to my, yeah, and this is the Pro Acryl Titanium White. So this is about as white as you can get. And you can see we're trying to be sparing with it. We're not using it absolutely everywhere. We're just finding a few spots where we use that. Because if we overdo it, it, it's just like weathering and chipping and all that kind of stuff. Or even the object source lighting. When you go overboard, too much is just too much. And boy, it can become that in a real hurry. See, like here, see how that line is, is broken? Want to keep the texture underneath. That's just, I couldn't do that. Well, I, I suppose I could with the liner brush, but that this is what the spotter brush is, is made for, these little tiny things. Now, I think we did, yeah, we did that on the other side. Just had to look. Now, I got to do something here. Maybe even find a couple of the teeth here. I'm probably going to go in there at some later point and maybe really paint in some stronger details on those teeth. I'm going to go back to my greenish mix there. Again, that's the Kelian green mixed with stuff like the mint green. And the true blue. See, now we're just kind of, again, doing a little more in the way of texture here. Very little subtle things. Just going to sneak in and some more texture because that mostly got filed away because there was a big old uh, gate there or a vent. Which, I mean, that can kind of happen in just about every... It, it's difficult, I suppose, on a bust because there's no feet. You know, it's, it's a little bit tougher to find a good place for something like a gate or a vent. I'm going to go back to some of my purple here real quick. And basically use that as a little bit of a dark here. Here, and this part of his nostril there just was looking kind of dead dark. You know, we never want dead darks. And that's just... Yeah, it's, yes, it's dark, great, whatever, but it's there's no interest in it. 
or, or to it. So that is what I'm trying to do here on the underside. Yes, that's dark, but what if I was to put almost this little bit of purple reflected light there? Can we do the same thing over here? That kind of started to do it, but let's really finish that off like so. Okay, this again is just sort of a, it's it's just dark down in there. Let's see if we can add something in there that's, so we're not making it lighter, we're just giving it a different color or giving it a color. If I do that trick where I, once again, I'm going to go back to my controls here, we'll kill that color. Let's see, all the value is still there. As we bring it back, and now you start to see the purple in there. Oh, let's go back to this fluorescent paint here. Let's mix some of it with the Pro Acryl. So we get a little bit more of a pure version of the fluorescent here. I'm going to go back into the eye. Also bring back the chat because I didn't have a chance to use the spotter here on the eye yet. Let's make that a little lighter. And I'm trying to get that modeled look in the eye just like the, the picture there. There we go. That's more like it. Can I do that this way? Yeah. Let's see if I can't go another step lighter here. How's about that? Yeah. I'm going to go back around. Okay, and then I'm going to just take the, this is the, the fluorescent here, let's see what kind of, uh, I can do some little, almost like, I don't want to say veins, but up towards the top of the eye here. That's it. Again, just trying to find ways to import a little bit of texture there. And now I'm going to set this down. I'm going to just grab some some art coat real quick here, and we'll throw that over the eyes. So it's just, uh, just that. Nothing real fancy here. We'll just grab a bit of it. And you could even mix some of the blue with this, almost like you're tinting water effects, because kind of that's what you're doing here. So now his eyes will see how that kind of tracks the highlights there. You could do a few different layers, but yeah, almost think of it like you're tinting water effects, basically. Now I'm going to go back to my smaller little spotter brush here and see what other things I can do with this same blue. Maybe get some definition there. Yeah, just a, we'll, we'll do a few of these here and there. Yeah, just trying to orientate this where you can see it. That needs to be darker, but not just darker, but also a color. So we've been at this eh, 
two hours, a little over two hours. I just looked and saw that it was 412, and I went, huh? How did that happen? It happens. There. See, now we're starting to get some of it there. Let's put one more right here. There. And here. Let's with our smaller brush. Let's start to work out some of the details on the back here, maybe. Again, adding, I got the purple as a sort of an underlayer there. Now I'm starting to add more of this, more of a greenish color, the bluish green over the top. And let's Do something like this here again down in my darks. I know that's not the most interesting area of the miniature of the bust. Actually, not a miniature. Sorry about that. There, let's build this up here a bit. So, yeah, I'm glad I did the. A little bit of water effect on the eyes. That's always fun. Let's see if I can't draw in a few little... Like that. I try one right in here to... Let's get some... Yeah, I don't want to work this into too many places, but remember, if the color goes somewhere, it has to go everywhere. So it can't just be only on the eye. There has to be in other places, too. And that's what I'm trying to find here is other places where I can bring that same blue And that's actually a, it's a fluorescent blue. I will be using this on the Cypher Lords. Not that they're going to be blue necessarily, but I'm going to add that blue to the colors that I'm, I'm mixing. And it's going to give it that extra bit of intensity. I did it with my Tomb Kings. Yeah, that's boy, that's coming up sometime later this month. That's going to be part of more you know YouTube live sessions the Ossiarchs now actually I've got a well it's not supposed to get here I guess till the 22nd but I've got some Blood Bowl the new Lizardman Blood Bowl team is coming here that's going to be a Patreon series takes you through the whole process basing uh, I actually got the field and the idea is I want to match the bases to the whatever the the printed field is so I thought that could make a really interesting lesson because it's one thing that just well okay we're going to do snow basing or whatever but when you have basing that has to match now I'm going to get some light over here and these but that's a little too light no too light too fast so we tone it down now remember that's got the pro acryl basically sky blue in there so that's why it's covering just so massively Okay. Let's 
some more uh, let's go with some more light over here so one of the things that I'm trying to do is and I've tr been trying to do this for a while I've been thwarted in various ways is to try and make a filming station for large-scale stuff and by large scale I mean big critters and 75 millimeter stuff and stuff like the creature caster demons that are much bigger it's just over I've kind of learned something as I keep filming these, even the smaller ones, and then occasionally try the larger ones. I, I do learn things. Is okay, yeah, that's just not going to work. Things that I think are going to work end up not. The stuff that I don't think is going to work ends up working. Yeah, now this I'm tempted to say I'm tempted to make those lighter, but if I make them lighter, then it's gonna reduce the effectiveness of that highlight right there. I don't want to be, don't want to do that. Well, the the enemy of good is better, and better is the mortal enemy of all deadlines everywhere. As I just add some more. More light there. Yeah, you, should, you. It's really tough to match deadlines when you just keep saying, "Well, it's not perfect yet." Sometimes you have to just sort of say, "You know what? Ninety percent of my vision is good enough, or seventy, because how does anybody know what your original plan was?" They don't know whatever grand idea you had for something. All they know is what they see. And it can be hard to sort of step away from that a little bit and go, Bah, but I wanted to do this. Well, yeah, you did. But do you also want to be painting that same miniature for the rest of your life? Or do you want to get your army done or whatever? Or do you want that deadline to be matched, met for your painting contest or whatever? Sometimes good enough is just good enough. So now I'm just trying to, these little beads right here, just trying to find some highlights here, some definition, because we've got so much here, right? we gotta, we got to match that elsewhere. And this is where the spotter brush comes in handy. And I haven't even mixed any of the maggot white into that. You know, again, the maggot white, that's been a lot of our highlight color around here. We haven't really used that at all here. So we're going to start using that. More so up towards the top of these so that it just starts to recede as it goes down towards his neck where are we at here okay again these little tiny dots here not the most fun thing to be watching See that now that is the one thing where when I'm doing my recorded videos for either YouTube the patreon page or whatever for a class they can sort of get the picture of what's happening here. They don't need to see every last dot. So maybe that is somewhere where I would just kind of turn the camera off and do the rest of the dots and say, okay, we've done a thousand little dots here. Now we're back. But that doesn't work so well for live TV, does it? Okay, let's do a little bit of, yeah, those need to be highlighted. This here, too, along these outer edges, and still nowhere near the kind of highlights that the face has. 
So as I do these here, and then we show you this, you can see it's nowhere near the dramatic what we've got here. Now, how do you know that the job is done? Lauren asks. Oh, and many thanks. I, I really appreciate that because I just didn't know what to expect from this one. Had no idea. Never really painted anything like this. Well, definitely never painted anything remotely like this before. Sometimes, well, like I said, when it's you have that original vision and you've got 70 80 percent of it you have a majority of what those different effects were sometimes it's that little voice inside your head that says don't do it don't mess with it that's a voice you should pretty much listen to every single time you know the, the one that wants to do more that's the little demon on your shoulder there that's saying yeah yeah you need you need to go back in there and mess around with that and within two seconds, you realize, yeah, I didn't really want to be messing around with that. It, you can tell right away. I don't know how many times people have, have seen a bust or, or whatever, a miniature that I saw like a, a, was a work in progress image on Facebook. And the next thing you know, it's sitting in a vat of simple green or whatever to strip it. Actually, I never stripped a miniature as aside from ones that we got off of eBay that were covered in enamels or something, never actually stripped the miniature. Mostly because I listened to that little voice that said, yeah, you know, the enemy of good is always better. Because sometimes you can end up adding things that actually nobody's going to see. I mean, heck, I, I know I've been at, at tournaments and stuff, and there's people like, oh, well, look, you painted the eyes. <laughs> they go, what? <laughs> well, of course I painted the eyes. But in their, in their realm of thinking, most people didn't even bother to paint the eyes, so they weren't even looking. They didn't even notice the fact that, um, yeah, the eyes were painted. There was a bunch of different colors on the flesh tone. It was like a little portrait, but their experience was people didn't really even bother painting eyes. So I guess maybe that it comes down to what your audience is going to be. And I know people with the, the painting contest, well, they, they want to show every last thing that they know how to do. They want to show every skill, and that's when they create what I like to call a technique golem. It's really not so much a cohesive miniature, but half a dozen different techniques just kind of stitched together onto one figure to show that they can do all those things. So you'll have a what would end up being like a 30-foot high banner on a figure. Oh, I'm going to go back to my Achillean green here and do some things in here. Because we've got plenty of the other type of blue. I want some of my greenish blue back in here. But you just kind of know, you say, you know what? Yeah, I'd like to do that other thing, but if I do that, it's just going to overwhelm all this other stuff that I did. And it's the hardest thing. It can be a really hard Especially for some folks, what is that, the perfectionist uh, gene? Where you think, I, I just got to do this. It's not perfect. But yeah, your perfect is, is another person's done. You know, or your imperfect is another person's finished. Sometimes it actually does help now. See, for me... I very seldom just sit there and finish one thing. I am painting hundreds of figures at the same time. Just different genres. And if you want to see, let's see if I can find it here. So this is something I was just painting a couple hours before this. This is a Cruel Seas Higgins PT boat. You can't get much different than this. 
And before this, I was painting probably some Song of Ice and Fire miniatures or whatever. And that also gives you that fresh perspective, I guess, if you want to call it that. That that fresh set of eyes on a on a miniature. Now the other thing too, and we noticed this, Kathy and I, we would not really be happy with whatever it was we did. We'd say, "Oh man, I just that wasn't happening. That miniature was a chore to paint. I'm sure it looks horrible." And then we'd actually we take pictures of it, and we go to process that in Photoshop just to make sure it wasn't too light or too dark or whatever that was in focus and we go well wait a minute is that the same miniature that I hated just a few minutes ago because that can't be the same one because the one that I took pictures of I hated I did not like it so you find out hmm yeah maybe <laughs> that wasn't uh, as horrible as I thought it was I'm going to see if I can't get a little more this and then I'm going to see if I can't take some of my purple and some of my original dark wash that's still out there it's right here this big old blob right in there that is the original wash that I did I'm going to maybe see if I can't drop some things like this see that little bit of a vein that I just painted in there Let's do that on some of these because it's sort of a big open space. Maybe it gives it more of a membrane type of a look, something that's more translucent. We'll do some on this side. And we're not doing anything crazy color-wise. It is the... Basically, we're using the washes that were originally used. We're just making them thinner. There. Just, again, drawing in some veins here. Trying to make it different with each, each one of these. Okay, let's... Do that on this row. Now, for me, it, it's kind of an artificial whatever that little voice is. It just got to be done because it's got to go in in a box and be shipped somewhere. Or, well, yeah, you can screw around with perfection, but when there's no electricity to power that magnifier light. It's going to be really hard to see miniatures. So just get it done. And that, that goes along with my commercial art training. You know, because I did that for... That was what I was trained as before I ever even left art school. It was to do the commercial art stuff where good enough is good enough. They're not looking for a Sistine Chapel masterpiece. It should sort of look like that. But they are not quite willing to spend the time or money to actually have a Sistine Chapel masterpiece. So, <laughs> kind of work within those confines. Okay, let's see if we can't take some of this. Again, that's our original dark there. some of that away and like I've done it other places give it see almost drawing in the texture there I'm gonna do some of that here that's where it basically either was filed away or whatever and 
Then with the teeth, we've got still have some of that sort of brownish red there. Probably mostly wild wood. I'm going to try and do a little bit of a glaze on the teeth here. Because those were a little on the flat side. That's better. Gets a little bit of color into them now. Oh, let's do some more over here. I don't want to do too much because it's then I'll get just too dark and they'll kind of disappear. Now, same thing over on this nostril over here. And I draw in a little bit of texture here. think I'm going to do a little bit of a glaze here. Same color. It's, it's on the top of this little ridge line here. Needed to bring out those spines. So this is Mara said a while back that I was going to be going back in here probably adding some more shadows and darks. See, and a little bit of texture here now. Oh, let's do that again. Maybe even accentuate where a few of those spines begin. Because we have so much in the way of contrast here. We want to make sure that that ends up in other places too. I need some separation on these. That helps. And yeah. So these are the little, again, the, the subtle details now that I can let catch my attention that before I had to ignore those, had to ignore that temptation. And I think just like I did on the front of the mouth there, I'm going to get drawn some texture there. going to take some of the maiden flesh here and mix it in. This is, again, we're mixing some of the contrast paint together with a lighter, more opaque paint. And what I want to try and do is see if I can't find, again, a few of those teeth to bring out now that we've knocked some of them down let's bring a few of them back up again let's do a little more this time pretty much with mostly just the maiden flesh all right there's just a couple here now that might be fun to get there. Let's look at the front here because we did some of those glazes. Yeah, it's, that should be pretty good. Well, there's a couple of teeth right here I've got to get so that, that there's some turn here. There. And I may need to. Do the same on the other side. Just working to get a few little irregular highlights. Or not every single tooth highlighted to the nth degree. Just every so often. Just like here on the scales, we were doing the same thing. Just finding some highlights here and there. Now, any other, yeah, I can see a few other places where I want some separation. Now, 
obviously up here I could spend oh several more hours on this obviously there's I haven't even touched the base I don't think you really need to see that but this goes back to that question of when is something done You, it's how much refinement do you want to add to it? Because here, if I had the the time, I I'd love to spend fifteen twenty hours painting just this and adding tons of subtle little things to it. But just like most people's realities, that is not my reality either. Because things just have to be done. As much as I'd love to spend ungodly amounts of time on just one thing, that is not even close to the reality. That is, can't be much further away from the reality. Now here I have to, it's a tricky balance of Wanting these to stand out along here, but also not going too far. Because again, if it detracts from this, what's the whole point of doing all this stuff on the dragon's face? Only to lure them away with some minor scales on his neck. Now here, I can just take again, some of my original glazing colors here. Let's grab the... The shyish purple, grab some of the blue liner here. And we'll just make this a little more solid here. But that's still, we haven't touched that since well over almost two hours and 40 minutes ago. And I'm going to see if I can't carry some of this out into the scales here so it looks less like a sudden ending and like it's it's part of it I think that works on that side let's we'll see what we can do on this side in the same manner I also I'm gonna get a few of the lighter scale colors in here too. And if it gets too light, I can go back into that Achillean green, knock it down. That is the beauty. I don't have to look for the perfect teal green there because all I did was I just took a little bit more of the Achillean green and added it to it to darken that down so much easier than just trying to find that that exact right color because you're probably never going to find the exact right color even if you own every jar of paint ever made and that gets pricey that gets way pricey I think sometimes people are shocked when they hear just how few jars of paint. Now, I, I'm using more now only because I basically have to replicate the same, I don't know, 10, 12 colors in several different paint brands so that people can actually get their hands on it. But otherwise, yeah, I'd be using just the same 10 or 12 Reaper liner and clear paints, and that's it. I just wouldn't be needing anything else. I'm basically experimenting with these other things so that you know, folks who can't necessarily get a certain product have at least some option. That's what I really try to do with any of the videos, whether they're a recorded one or a YouTube live or if I'm live at a convention or whatever.
like an Adepticon or Reprocon, Gencon, Historicon, whatever, is just to throw out some ideas for people. Not super hard and fast rules like, oh, you got to do this. Uh, actually, this is just uh, it's just a private thing for me because I've never had a chance to do something like this. I mean, I suppose I could throw it on eBay or something like that. Uh, I think there is actually a Patreon pledge where you can get the bust. I think there is a I don't remember which one it is, but I think that might still be out there. Uh, what George will do, though, if you paint one of his busts, you can send him the some pictures of it, and he will put it up on the website. I think he has a basically a gallery because yeah, everybody treats the, the same figure or bust in a different way. And this, this way it gives people that many more ideas where they say, oh, okay, yeah, or someone else paints it in a completely different way. I know Jessica, she does her her cross-hatching style, almost making it look like it's more of a 2D uh, animation cell. And that that's what she does with hers. And Aaron, he, because he does more with the airbrush stuff, so his has a certain look to it. He'll treat it a different way. And that's that's really neat, seeing all the people's different ideas. Actually, back in the old days of Cool Mini, we would really look at the the gallery, and it didn't matter what the score was. We didn't care if it was an 8 or 9 or 10. Sometimes it could be a 6 or a 7. But the idea was really original, really good. And sometimes we were more inspired by things that were a lower score because maybe they didn't quite know how to execute it or maybe didn't have the practice yet but it didn't make the idea any less sound. At something like this, it's just nice to have also at conventions because it, it's a physical example that people can actually hold in front of their face and see instead of just looking at pictures. So when, when I do things, well, that's why at Reprocon, I... I don't know how much I spent to ship 200 miniatures down there, but I wanted people to have examples of many different techniques and color schemes. See, we're now just going back in now and... So those definitely look a little... See, it starts to work now more with the dragon overall. Might just throw a few little subtle dark lines through all of this, like that. I don't want to call it cross hatching, but I just on some of the the two D art or whatever, I noticed that people had done some a lot of cross hatching there. That just sort of struck my fancy. Now, I want to take a little bit of the, again, that's the contrast paint there. I just try and settle up a few edges in the teeth. And as far as the, the base itself goes, you know, it's, it doesn't have to be anything super complex here. We can. Take some of this. So now we have something that's more of a grayish brown. And we can get not a dry brush. Not a dry brush. There's plenty of paint on there. But now we're basically making grays and greens for rocks. Because we don't want that to be yeah, I could also throw some snow effects on these rocks, I suppose. 
or some kind of ice effect on there. I may, I might actually, maybe I'll try that. So again, just going into my, that's that the contrast wildwood. It's blending into the the same mint green that we used on so much of the figure itself. That certainly could be interesting to do a some kind of snow effect on this. It would certainly make it stand out from the other one. I guess one, well, Drogon is sort of a grayish dragon with some almost like red accents. Here I'm mixing some maiden flesh in there now. It lightens it up but also warms it up a touch. Again, not a dry brush because that's why I can go in here and sort of push that around. All I'm trying to do is just catch the edges of this here. I, I don't think I'd use my crushed glass. I don't have a whole lot of my crushed glass left to use on this, but that's a really fun snow effect that I like to do. Anyone that knows me knows I love my crushed glass. It just makes the most fantastic snow effects. I'm going to actually bring in some... You can see just how dark that actually was as I bring in a little bit of the maggot white now. But again, I don't want to compete with my... the lightest colors on the face. And just throw in a little bit of texture onto this. I said maybe at some point tomorrow when I get a chance to do the pictures of this, you might see snow on there. To me, that might just attract too much attention to the pedestal or whatever. So I'm inclined that this is that what enemy of good is is better but the, oh wouldn't it be neat to have snow effects on there and ice and everything else well yeah but now you're why do you want people to be looking so much at the pedestal don't you want them to be looking at the this portrait basically that you just painted now go even touch lighter and touch towards the warm here and grab a little more of the contrast paint there it makes it almost more of a brownish color and that's only going to be in a few areas see I'm, I'm using the side of the brush all of a sudden my number eight round becomes like a number 20 round it becomes that much bigger using the the soft bristles there because like I said that is not a dry brush there's plenty of paint on there now we've gone with a lot of blue or a lot of the warmer colors I'm gonna do a few here it brings back some of the iciness because we have to unify these things together don't want those two things elements to be separated And I'm just focusing the lightest colors on the base closer to the figure itself so that it sort of walks you up to the the face instead of drawing you away. There. As I said, if you want to get the, the notifications for these things, I will try and do them at many different times so that people just aren't, you know, you're not locked into only this, well, late night time here in the U.S. or breakfast in Europe or supper out in Australia in the Pacific Rim and such. Now, just like I did... 
I think on the figure, I'm going to try and get some dark. And that the more of a mid tone here. So see that a bit of a brown works its way in there. It removes some of the harshness and the difference of the the lighter tones that we've added here. We did the same thing on the dragon, so now we're doing that on our pedestal. And I'm even going to take a little bit of the this is that Achillean green mix, but it's it's dirtied up with a little bit of our well, rock color there. And now, see, we're going to splash in a little bit of our dragon's colors onto this. It helps to unify it with the dragon. It takes away also any kind of graininess there is in that texture also. And you see it's kind of kind of hard to work it all onto the, the picture at once but there maybe that will show it reasonably well. Now just tilt it over on its side there and that is none too shabby there oh hey oh hey anthony how's it going thanks so much and devious dungeons painting oh thanks it is a <laughs> i always call it the subversive painting style because it kind of is it just seems to go very much against the grain of the conventional wisdom but sometimes conventional wisdom is not quite so wise as I'm going to again, go back into that contrast paint there and now we're making something that's a little more on the warm side here so it's that same back and forth that we did on the face where we went purple in some parts and then more of the greenish blue in others we are doing that again only now with even more subtle tones here on the base. It's that balance of the warm and the cool. Saturated versus unsaturated. See how we've got more of a brownish color there now? Yeah, I will not do the, the snow on it. As much as I'd like to do the snow on here, I'll just leave it be, leave it as it is. Again, that to meet that might wander into the too much category. So this is more of a darker brown here. Oh, and oh, thank you very much. It's great to, great to hear from Sydney. there oh what was it that I just uh, yeah the it was a meme I think or something no actually I don't know but uh, Kit Kat was gonna do the this, this mint dark chocolate thing and it was proclaimed yeah those already exist and the very delicious mint chocolate Tim Tams a mighty fine biscuit We're going to do some of that brown in here. It's a little bit like where you see how this is, it's got more of the green, and then this is more of that ultramarine, more of the reddish blue. That is, we're doing the same thing here. See, we've got the cooler color there, and now we add in some of this warmer color. Let's do our little trick here. With the color intensity, we'll take that down. So as you see, we got the same. We got shading there, just like on the face, 
and also here. See, there's this is lighter. This is not quite as light, but the shading is still there. And then when we bring back our color intensity, we see the difference in those, just like we're seeing the difference here. There. Because I've seen, oh my gosh, I'll never forget the podcast that I was on where people talked for hours, quite literally two and a half hours, about how if you want to win contests, you should only use certain colors, have your own painted backdrop, do this, do that, only these type of miniatures, because you can only do these type of colors. And by the time this was over with, if you were to take the whole of human humanity, there was like three miniatures that anyone could paint to actually be successful in a content in a contest. Oh yeah, the Tim Tams. Uh, I know Kathy. She tends to like the I think that's the salted caramel. That tends to be her favorite. And for me, the the mint chocolate. Oh boy, that's always been a favorite. Now another thing, color goes somewhere. It must go everywhere. I uh, see me grabbing some of this purple here, but what am I doing? Graying it down with a little bit of, it's almost like it's palette sludge, which is one of the most useful colors of all time. Everybody loves palette sludge. Well, I know I do. So now I'm getting a little bit of purple into the rocks. Again, it doesn't have to be very pronounced, just like here on the face. The purple is not really pronounced, but... It's there. The eye just registers it as gray. Because what did we do? We, we've got basically red and green together here. It's going to make it a brownish gray. Here, let's work our way into this. Let's go across. So we've got this purple in here. We need to have it onto our base. And all of this, all of the black heart busts are definitely a part of the Patreon page series. And let's see, that the Drogon, that's going to be in oils. That will be for the Patreon page. I think that's probably going to be scrolling across the bottom of the screen right now is the blog. That's where you can see a lot of the pictures of things that have been painted but uh, now see it's got the wapelias blogspot.com if you go on instagram look for wapelias there i guess i'm going to have to add that to my scroll so that i don't have to keep saying it but that's actually a decent place to look for pictures of finished miniatures so look at this we have some of the warmer brown we have some of the cooler blue and now we're adding in some purple so nowhere is there black on any of this. But we're carrying that same purple down in here, but it's more of a grayed down version. It takes away some of that graininess because we're taking away some of the harsh differences between the highlights and the darks. It's the same sort of thing we did, especially in this area here where we use the purple in there to take away some of the harshness and the transitions there. Okay, let's get some of our purple in here. And where that's too late. Now I'm going to actually go back again into that contrast wildwood there. That sort of warms things up. I see we we need a little more of the cooler colors here, so let's do that. Now I didn't get a chance to see the the grand. Actually, well here I can't watch it. I can just listen to the the broadcast on on the internet and have obviously the game tracker going. I think the believe it or not, the last final that I got to watch on TV. <laughs> It was the infamous drawn final between St. Kilda and Collingwood. 
And Kathy being a St. Kilda fan, that was just... She does not remember that fondly. Because I believe, I'll never forget, the announcer just says, Hey, everybody, that was great. Uh, we'll see you again next week. And the players, nobody knew what the heck was going on. That was just really interesting. Well, and then I believe they lost, it was either by, was it by 56 points when they redid the final? That was really, really strange. And there was like 30 people in the stands. Ah, there. Now this is the actually it's the same same number eight round that we used to do all of the initial washes and glazes here into the face. Here we'll do some more. This later. Also again trying to have some of the darkest darks be on the face and not on the base. And you can see now how that the base just starts to get a little bit more in sync with the figure itself. Now I'm gonna try and get some a few lighter tones on here. Again, that's the same mint green that we've used all along. We'll dirty it up just a touch. Just a bit. And just like I was doing some of the textural things here on the front of the face, I'm doing the same thing here on our rocks. But it's very, see, it, it's not a dry brush. It's, it's a semi-translucent, though, because yet we're, we've got contrast paint as part of the mix so that is already a translucent paint and then a lot of the Reaper paints you can rely on them to be especially the clears and and such and that was something I discussed early on that we've got the pro acrylics like uh, here and, and over here those are just going to be far more opaque now I'm gonna try and find a few up to, again towards the top here a few areas of light almost highlights but certainly nowhere near as saturated as what's going to be on the bust itself Yeah, well, I think, well, we've basically passed the three-hour mark, and I think we've got this pretty good to go. And and by three hours, I mean from just primer. There was nothing else on this whatsoever. And, and there's been no, like, just kind of turning off the camera, and all of a sudden, oh, look, there's this whole other thing that we did. No, that's <laughs> and let's see I've got like I said the uh, three so two more of these almost said Lord of the Rings two more of these Game of Thrones dragons then speaking of Lord of the Rings there is smog and then rain of fire so I'll still do so uh, at least one if not Maybe, yeah, I'll do at least one more for on a YouTube live here, and I'll definitely do at least a couple for the Patreon page. And I'm going to add a little bit more of that lighter blue again, trying to tie the rocks here in with the dragon as much as possible.
Because this, this highlight color is really not a highlight. It's actually very, very dark. Look at it. Look at this. Compared to the light. Look at how much darker that is there. So it's definitely... Here, I'm going to actually get a little bit of that maggot white in here. And we'll see. Yeah. I'm going to just on the very top edge of these rocks bring in some some of this lighter some of this lighter bluish gray we'll turn him around a little more here Certainly up here. Yeah, let's go just a little more towards the maggot white. Almost giving it the same little bit of sparkle as I did on some of these on the, the face right here. Uh, let's see, uh, uh, Anthony asks if I don't have an airbrush, but with dry brushing with light gray, white still take glaze as well. Oh, yeah, well, geez. We use the same Badger Stino Res primer. And that's that's the stuff here. We used it for years before we ever had an airbrush. We just brushed it on with the same exact brush like this. And there's we still do it today. Uh, Kathy and I have both just done brush on primer. Uh, actually, it was on my Lord of the Rings series. I didn't use the airbrush at all to prime it. I actually brush primed it as part of the video. And I, I did the same kind of... Oh, geez, I hate the Zenithal priming expression, but it was, it was kind of like this. Only it was done with a brush instead of an airbrush. It's all just primer, and primer is made to take paint. Now, it wasn't really dry brush per se, just like this is not... A dry brush here, but uh, was that primer painting? Yeah, I just call it primer painting. Now, uh, actually, there is. If you look at, uh, you can search the YouTube channel for things like Badger Airbrush, and you'll see I've got a nice long priming tutorial. And actually, it's got a couple of the Blackheart dinosaur busts. And that that'll show you how I go about the the priming of the stuff, and the idea behind it. Oh, no problem, Anthony. Now yeah, there is I, I mentioned earlier. There's about a seven eight second delay from when you write something to when I actually see it. Oh, here we'll accentuate that. That's this is again from Blackheart models I sometimes like to have their logo on the screen but there just wasn't enough room for that logo and this big old dragon bust here okay well it is <clears throat> it is now 5 11 a.m. here so I will say this is adequate that is not too shabby there we got a whole bunch done on this guy here again this is the Vizarian from Blackheart Models. There. So I just want to say thanks to well, Trevor and Anthony and Devious Dungeons and Laurent. And let's see, we've got... Oh, and Nick is Zeno and uh, Benov. And, of course, Tyler, John, Greg number one, Bethany and Trevor. Thanks again, everybody. I appreciate you guys joining in on this. These are really fun. So do the thing where you not just subscribe, but hit that bell for all notifications, and then you will know when something, well, hopefully fun, like this is about to happen. So thanks again, everybody, and I will catch you on the next one.